Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and this is my Lord of the Rings hobby. And in today's video we'll be making a Hobbit Ween special. Uh, this is from Dark Realms Forge, uh, which is on my mini factory. Now, this was meant to be done over a month ago, but sadly I've had a really bad injury on my wrist, which has actually stopped me doing near enough everything and anything in life. Uh, so I do apologise about it being a very late. Uh, as you'll see also in this video, I have painted certain bits inside the house. But I'm not going to tell you too much detail about them because I'm going to save them later on. Okay, so the first thing we did was paint the flooring with dry hard bark. We did that throughout the whole of the uh, building. And then we did the beams and the outer edges with uh, Rhinox Hide. Just get a different colour on there uh, just to make it stand out. So I forgot to start recording so I joined halfway through this bit. But what we ended up doing was the walls with rack hard flesh. And we did that over the, the whole... Uh, building so it's just basically making it look like wallpaper so i just added a bit more color to the inside which was the uh, cupboards and we're just painting that a quick uh, caliban green so starting with the brickwork we did doom ball brown all around it so this is really good because i wanted the red brick effect and of course this being a very uh, ready brown sort of color uh, it added a really nice uh, starting base color to it uh, so we applied that all over now while letting that dry i decided to move on to the wood and this is again done with rhinox hide and we're doing this all around the outside of the building so we're just getting all the beams of wood all nicely painted i do apologize for the blurry effect here it was just one of those sadly uh, moments on camera so just a quick update while it's all being nicely drying and this is how it should look so what i did here was add morfang brown again to the brickworks on the outside so this is the doorway and around the window frames uh, I'm not too sure why I picked this colour, it just looked quite nice when I did it on the inside so I stuck with it, the, like the ready brown colours. Now the brick works took me a long time to get right, that's why I had to practice on the inside. So as you saw by the colours then we used a lot of skin colours, a nice sandy orangey brown I guess it would be considered. And we applied that in little spots here and there, slowly sort of going over the odd brick work uh, where I can. Again trying to make patterns but not too much patterns, it's like random but looking tidy. Doesn't matter if one or two of the brick uh, the uh, bricks are the same color next to each other it actually helps it now this technique I did for just because I live in England and I saw uh, you see this on a lot of council houses so what I did is I covered it all with glue and then I end up adding a uh, sand to it and it's a nice sand and it, I don't know what they use in the UK it's like a plaster thing but it makes it stick out a lot better I was really happy with the effect so I did that and while that was drying, I got a dry brush of Terminus Brown, uh, Terminus Stone, sorry, I think it's called. Uh, now, I love this. I think it's the best colour ever, and it's a dry brush what doesn't get. I think dry paints themselves don't get talked about a lot in the range, but I love it. So I do this all over the wood bit, all over the brickwork, all over the uh, windowsills, and it just makes it pop a lot better. It brings out that colour in that white sort of uh, chip chalk uh, brickworks, what you do see around so once we were happy with everything being dried I ad uh, added uh, Rakar flesh uh, colouring all around the uh, sand area and so forth uh, don't worry I did tidy this up later on and went back to it this was just a mental block a process I wanted to add later on so there's one thing I forgot to add which is the step of me actually using uh, Agrat surf shade I did that all over the stonework and everything to dull down those colours so they still pop but they don't pop as much because I want this looking Halloween a bit more dark than normal. After I was happy with all that, we went and moved on to the roof. Now, there's a couple of things I forgot to do. Uh, one is hit record on painting the thatch roof, and that is literally done with uh, Zandri dust. And then I filled in all the other little details, as you can see, with the normal paint scheme of the brickwork. So, now this is probably the most exciting thing I like to do uh, when I've now started this hobby, is actually adding uh, static grass. Again, I'm not going to go through the whole process of one by one, but I'm just going to show you the little bits we did. So once I was happy with all the rest of the building, I moved on to the roof. Uh, as you can see, I added Zandri dust as a thatching colour onto the thing and did the brickworks the same and so forth, like the outer windows. Now, static grass is probably the best thing ever for this hobby. I love it. I don't know why. I'm not that good at it yet. Uh, but I just wanted to show you what I did and how I did it. So the first thing you do, of course, is apply a very thin layer of PVA glue. I let that dry for a little bit and then I add a 2mm layer of dead grass onto it. 
and then what we do is that is what like they call their basing so it's like your painting it's your basing colors and once we're happy with that and we've got enough coverage what we do then is get some uh, spray uh, this is grass spray I can't remember what they call it uh, but I got this from uh, World War Scenics I believe it is called and the reason why I did this is last time I did a video like this the, the spray I used which was online which got recommended ended up making a mess rather than looking good so I did this with the uh, spray uh, the glue spray I call it for the sake of it and then I added a 4 mil. but I, this one I used I think it's called Wild Meadow uh, Grass 4 mil Wild Meadow and then what we do let that dry slightly and then I'm going to apply now a heavier one as you see I get a bit of the uh, grass on the brick on the not the brick work sorry but on the thatching I leave it like that too just to tell a bit more of a story this house is meant to look slightly decayed so we went from there and as you can see the volumes it does and the reason why you want to go from small to big so it goes from 2 mil to 4 mil to 6 mil is to create this wild looking realistic grass especially with different colours and shadings going on underneath it so these are the hills all done and the roof and so forth so we're going to leave these to dry for a while and then we're going to go into our base of where the house is going to sit so this was for ever expanding my head how i wanted it to look and the different things so let's start from the usual all we're going to do is xpf foam and we're going to glue that onto some mdf i had some i think i've got six milli mdf and three milli uh xpf i can't remember the exact measurements anything will do because this is going to literally it's just a base i'm not going to spend too much time on this uh my whole point is to build the environment around it so once that was all nice and done and happy with we decide then to glue the house and the hills around as you can see i'm making a right mess of this this process should have done something slightly better but i wasn't too sure how i wanted it to look so this was me just going through how I think I wanted it to look, moving it around and then finally using the super glue to uh, stick it where I wanted it. And the reason why I want it a bit further back is you'll see as this, this video goes on the little details we do. So the first one of those is the cobblestone uh, drive uh, path should I say to the house. And I did this, I was going to do some farmland stuff but I decided against it because like I said I wanted Halloween, I wanted it to look very grotty. So this is me just putting cobblestone details along all the uh, pathway. I do this all the way up to the door making it different because I didn't want just brickworks, I didn't want the standard bricks, I wanted cobble. So I just thought that made it stand out a little bit better. So this is the details done. I've also added some like scratches in there like dig down and just made them uh, the bricks look like they've been cracked and so forth. Uh, the next bit I was going to do, or I am doing should I say, was I painted the whole base black. Now I didn't add a uh, surface to this on purpose because I wasn't that keen about adding anything else. I wanted to just do my grass and it was just going to be grass and then I'm hoping the environment what I build later on in the video you'll enjoy it and you'll understand why I didn't add too many details. Especially like putting a mud uh, texture underneath the grass because fingers crossed you don't see it my main thing was the pathway into the house making that look really cool and then doing the little details of uh, the bits later so stonework is quite an easy one mechanical standard gray any grades will do this just start dark and then move up to a brighter color and uh, we just apply this all over make sure we get it into the nooks and crannies on the in between all the brickwork and then once we were happy with that the only thing i forgot to do as i was kind of like in a rush because I wanted to make time up from it. I didn't use the uh, tinfoil technique where you roll it over to get the texture. So I went back and did that, as you can see from this one. So I'll give you a quick recap. It was a dark grey, and then I washed it over with uh, no oil, and then I just dry uh, brushed it again with a lighter grey. Not spending too much time on this. The next thing I wanted to do was add some cool little technique, it's just like moss, uh, different coloured bricks because it looks quite boring at the moment. So I went along and I added a bit of moss especially to the stairs and then like on the lip where the rainwater would normally go and then I just found random stones, again no pattern in, in my head, it was just uh, go along with the uh, camo shade and then I also after that went and got uh, the serpent sepia colour. And I just went from, again, random colouring, random splatters, just putting it in there, making the colours look really cool and a bit different. So a dry brush off to stone. Again, this is the one what I used on the outside of the house to tie it all back in together. Now, I won't go through these steps fully again, but we're using the static grass technique. So PVA all over the base. And then we're going to move on to our layering, which I will show you in a second. And that's going to go 2mm to 4mm 
actually no I didn't do two uh, four mil on this one I just did two mil to six mil just to get a wiry sort of finish on it now this was the bit what I was really happy with uh, and I was actually really looking forward to now we we're happy with how the basin looked I can see we've got all that detail there I managed to find some little leaves online these were done by I think it's Jarvis gaming uh, or Jarvis scenics I can't remember what the second bit I know it's Jarvis I believe uh, and I found these fine ones and slightly thicker ones and I just sprayed these everywhere I did use a bit of the uh, grass uh, spray the glue and I just went along it all and I just added uh, the thick ones first and then I did thin ones to fair it doesn't matter which way around you did it I just really love this little technique of the leaves and I sprinkled them everywhere a bit around the back but I mainly wanted it at the front because that's how I want us to see it the back doesn't really matter as much it's what's in front of us and how we're going to look at it so once we're happy with that I then decided to paint my small details of adding the bits here and this was a pumpkin and we did this was I think it was troll orange uh, an orange uh, a GW orange I can't remember off the top of my head but all I did was a couple of light uh, coatings of this because I still wanted that black to show through and this is them done so they wouldn't stand out too much but you can see the creases and the details were still there now I do believe this was a waste of time I tried to dry brush these spiders with a grey uh, I don't know why I just thought it would be fun I, on certain ones I saw a bit of a highlight but they're that small and you'd have to get that close to see it it probably wasn't worth it so once I was happy with everything and it was all dry, I decided to add a nice little spider web in the back there in the doorway. And that was done with a uh, dry, a tumble dryer sheet where the centered and all I did was stretch that nice and thin, ripped to one, possibly by mistake, but yeah. I added that to the doorway and I just PVA glued that in and made it stick out. Now the next thing I did after all this was done, after I finished painting the models, I then added them, of course, to the display, super gluing them in and uh, yeah, just seeing where they wanted to fit. I was going to do the uh, the guy, um, the farmer maggot at the door, but I changed my mind. I wanted him on the pavement, especially where it looks like there's blood, especially surrounded by his hounds, one hound running off, the other one right next to him circling him, and the other one looking like a boss just sitting there. Now, I do have these paint schemes done, and these are the two wraiths I've done too, to go with it, adding the blood effect with the, uh, I can't remember what it's called now, uh, Blood for the Blood Gods, I believe. Uh, I added that effect. Now, this video is quite long, so if you guys do want to see how I've added or how I've painted that, please let me know. I think YouTubers normally say something like, give me five likes and I will show you the how I paint it, the how to paint on these miniatures, and I'll do them all in one big video, so you don't have to like click through several links as usual, or however other people do it. This is me now adding, now I was happy with the miniatures, should I say. I started to add in my small little details with the spiders. Now, this was a pain. I need to find a better way to do it. I need tweezers because these things just bounced around everywhere and it was quite annoying. So this is them finally glued on. There's a couple on the roofs and like I said, I spread these out uh, to where I wanted to. And then I was adding the small little details. The final one, which was my pumpkins, which I was really happy with. And this is me struggling to place one. I had so much super glue on my hands, stuff was sticking to me. Uh, so yeah, note to self, do a different one. And this is the finished product, guys. I hope you've liked it. I uh, hope I, I, I this longer video hasn't been too tedious for you all and uh, hope to see you in the next one if you do like the video don't forget to like and subscribe yeah and let me know uh, comment down below tell me what you think and uh, bye for now guys